Hi there. Thanks for being here today. My name is Li Qigen. I'm very glad to be here to share with you how we reduce right latency in Thai KV. Let me introduce myself a little bit before we dig deep into our topic. I'm an infrastructure engineer at PINCAP, also a committer of Thai KV and Raft Eyes project. I focus on making Thai KV more efficient, scalable, and reliable. And I'm passionate about distributed systems and storage systems. First, let me introduce you to the TechEV project we're working with. TechEV is an open source, distributed, transactional key value database. Also, it is a CNCF graduated project. You might not be familiar with it, but so far, there are more than 9,800 stars and more than 320 contributors in GitHub. Furthermore, it is adopted by more than 1,500 adopters in production across multiple industries worldwide. So you could see we have a good open source community and a healthy ecosystem. Back to today's topic, to figure out how to reduce write latency in Thai KV, I'd like to begin with the question, why we need low average latency? According to Leto's law, concurrency is equal to throughput times latency. Also, throughput is equal to concurrency divided by latency. Please note that the latency here is average latency. So if average latency is lower, the throughput will be higher when the concurrency is the same. Next question I'd like you to think about is why we need low tail latency. Tail latency is the tail end of a system's response time spectrum and is often expressed as 99th percentile response times. TIKV usually serves the customer facing applications. The customers can only see the application as low and they don't care about whether they have encountered low probability events. Furthermore, the slow events may not have low probability because tail latency may have amplification effects for parallel fan out requests. For instance, in the transaction model of Thai KV, the pre-write phase needs to wait for all parallel pre-writes to be done. So the latency of pre-write phase is the maximum latency of all pre-writes. If the pre-write phase involves n pre-writes, the probability that its latency is longer than x percentile latency of per write requests is one minus x percent to n's power. X percent represents the probability that the latency of the request is shorter than the x percentile latency. And each request is an independent event. So x percent to n's power means the probability that n requests latency are all shorter than the x percentile latency. Therefore, the probability of its comp complementary events is what we want. For example, x is 90 and is 10, then the probability is 65%. It's pretty high, right? In summary, when n is larger, the latency of per write phase is closer to the tail latency of per write requests. Next, let's move to the right floor of Thai KV before we discuss the optimization. At first, a request is sent to scheduler workers, which are responsible for transaction, transaction and checking, and transform requests to key value pairs to rough store. Rough store is a consensus layer of TechEV. It uses rough consensus algorithm to make TechEV fault tolerant. Rough store has two serial groups, that is store serial and apply serial. Store serial are responsible for hand handling rough message and new proposals. When receiving a new proposal, store serial will write it to RoughDB and send a message to others. After this proposal is committed, it will be sent to apply serial, which will save it to KVDB. Then apply serial will call back to notify the outside that the request is written successfully. Each write of rough store contains a time to RoughDB write, KVDB write, network round trip, and so on. So it is the key point to reduce the right latency in the rough store layer. To this end, 
we focus on the store series first in the raft store layer. Store series handle the work of multi raft groups and they use raft eyes as consensus or grayson module. Raft eyes were written in Rust and originally ported from ECCD Raft. It is essentially a state machine. Events such as sending messages, saving to disk, are done by external modules, such as store series in TechAV. Then let's look at the flow chat. At the first of each round, store series calls step to handle multiple messages. For example, for the leader, the store series can propose commands and handle the append response for the, from the follower. For the follower, the store series can handle append requests from the leader. Then the store series gets ready to handle. Ready is a data structure that includes entries to be saved to disk, the committed entry to be applied, and the message to be sent. Leader sends message before saving entries to disk, while follower does the opposite. Finally, the store series calls advanced append to end this round. At each round, store series handle each raft group's messages and then ready one by one. The entry from this ready are batched and then written to raft DB together in the end of the round in order to optimize the right performance. In order to find a problem, let's calculate the store duration which is time between propose and commit of a proposal. Let's make some assumptions for simplicity. First, we only consider a single raft group. Secondly, disk write rate is constant. Thirdly, the request arrival time is uniformly distributed. Finally, the system reaches a steady state. In practice, a real system is far more complicated. For example, there's always a burst in requests for many reasons, and the disk write latency is not always the same. So it's a rough model based on these assumptions, but it's not enough to analyze the problem that we will mention next. This is a sequence diagram of stored duration under normal conditions. That is equal to the sum of all parts on the red line. Store loop is the processing time of one round of store series. It's equal to method duration plus IO duration. Proposed weight, method append weight, and method append response weight are all the time the message waits for the store series to process. According to the aforementioned assumptions, as the messages arrive uniformly and they will be processed in the next round, their average waiting time is about half of the store loop that is 0.5 method duration plus 0.5 IO duration. The duration time of a message append and a message append response is equal to network round trip time, RTT for short. After the network RTT and message weight are substituted into the equation, the store duration is equal to the sum of 4.5 method duration, 2.5 IO duration, and one network RTT. Let's take a good look at this equation. Is there something unexpected? Since the IO requests of a leader and a follower are parallel, the 2.5 IO duration is unexpected. Where does the extra time come from? As mentioned before, message weight is equal to the sum of 0.5 message duration and 0.5 IO duration. When a proposal is proposed, message append has to wait for 0.5 IO duration more before sending to followers. Similarly, when a message append response is received, the proposal has to wait for 0.5 IO duration more before being committed. So the root cause is both proposed weight and message append response weight contain an unnecessary 0.5 IO duration. But why message append weight is not included here? It seems to be very similar to them. It's because followers must wait for IO to be completed before sending a message append response to the leader. There's no difference whether the message append is handled earlier or not. 
Now we found the problem, how to optimize it. Optim obviously, we need to move the IO process out of the store series. Given that rough eyes have to wait for all the entries in Reddit to be written before proceeding to the next round, we need to support asynchronous Reddit to break this limitation. In addition, store series needs to use asynchronous IO to cooperate cooperate with asynchronous ready. Note that although we call it asynchronous IO, for now, we do not use Linux asynchronous IO technology such as AIO, IO Uring. We just simply move the IO process to the dedicated IO series in the current implementation. This is a PR for raft eyes and tracking issue for Techie V. Now let's look at the flow chat. Compared with the old flow, asynchronous ready allows the save to disk operation to be asynchronous. After writing is completed, the store series will call unready, unprocessed ready to notify the rough state machine. For rough store, besides using asynchronous IO to cooperate with asynchronous ready, some other parts related to asynchronous IO need to be notified, such as snapshot process and disappear process. Given the limited time, I won't go into more details here. Next, let's calculate the new store duration of the asynchronous version. In this sequence diagram, the leader IO and follow IO are added to indicate the IO series. IO wait means a waiting time of an IO request. Based on the assumption mentioned before, IO wait is equal to half of IO duration. Since the store series only process message and don't need to wait for IO, the store loop duration becomes a message duration. Therefore, message wait is equal to half of message duration. After message wait and IO wait are substituted to the previous equations, Store duration is equal to the sum of 4.5 method duration, 1.5 IO duration, and one network RTT. We compared the two different store duration and can find out that the asynchronous version's store duration is one less IO duration than the synchronous versions. Seem perfect, right? However, in reality, the message duration is not the same in the synchronous version and the synchronous version. There is an optimization called command batch in store series. Command batch will batch as many proposals as possible into one. In the case of the same total number of requests, the smaller number of proposals, the smaller the spillover head of store series and gRPC series. That's because of some internal implementation problems raised by many proposals and rough messages. We are trying to optimize them to mitigate the impact. But in my opinion, it can be totally eliminated. Back to these equations, the effect of command batch is very good in synchronous version due to the long IO duration, while it's not in the synchronous version. So the message duration of asynchronous version is longer than that of the synchronous version which reduces the benefits of this optimization. Here is a benchmark result of the sysbench insert. We use three TIKV, three TIDB, and one PD. The number of series of sysbench client is 800. Look at this figure. Asynchronous IOS QPS is more than 30% higher than masters. And these three figures are all about store duration. In the first figure, asynchronous IO's average store duration is about half of masters. In addition, asynchronous IO's average store duration has less jitter than masters. In the second figure, asynchronous IO's 99th percentile store duration is about one third of masters. In the third figure, asynchronous IO's 99.9 percentile store duration is about half of masters. Next, 
Let's talk about the future work that is to apply unpossessed entries. As mentioned before, store duration is a time between propose and commit of a proposal. Actually, it's not accurate. The exact definition is the time between when a proposal is proposed to when it's committed and persisted. As shown in the figure, the leader's I.O. encountered a tail latency, and the two followers respond to the leader with message append response earlier. At this time, the proposal has been committed, but not persisted to on leader, so it cannot be applied. This proposal has, has to wait for I.O. to be completed before being applied. By the way, this situation cannot happen in synchronous version because on leader, this proposal's method append response can only be handled after the I.O. is completed. It was found that this situation accounts for about one six in our pressure tests, which is much higher than we expected. Therefore, this is also one of the most important causes for tail latency of store duration. In fact, as long as the majority peers still exist, the committed entries will not be lost. So applying unpersist entries in advance should not break correctness, and it can significantly reduce the tail latency of store duration. As shown in the figure, the store duration is much shorter than before. However, in the extreme case of majority peer loss, some special processing is, are, are required to be recovered because the local apply process makes see the local maximum log entry. Here is the suspension insert benchmark of the demo. You can see that the 99th percentile latency is about 40% lower than the asynchronous I.O. version. And the 99th percentile latency has less jitter than the asynchronous I.O. version. This shows that this optimization effect is quite good. The next future work is parallel apply. At present, the apply process is a single serial serif for each raft group. If apply process can be multi serial in parallel, the average latency and the tail latency of apply duration can be reduced, especially when it's very hot. That's basically everything I plan to cover today. If you'd like to explore more or dig deeper into TechView project, please check out the resources are listed here. You're welcome to contribute to TechAV project and follow us on Twitter, YouTube, and contact us by Slack channel. Hopefully you get something useful today and thank you.